sits high and looks low on me, I just thank and praise Yahweh for an opportunity to stand before you today and minister his word. Pray that it bless all of you as it has blessed me. I want to talk about today praise. But before we get to praise, I just want to share a little story. I think sometimes we take the most important words and we begin to use them like a, a rubber stamp. We put them on everything and we use them loosely and freely. And when that happens, we kind of lose like some of the power that those words carry or some of that meaning is lost, you know. And one such example is the words, I love you. You know, I think people throw that word, I love you, around loosely. You know, I love you doesn't mean what 1 Corinthians 13 says that it means. You know, when people say I love you, it's I control you. You belong to me. You're my property. <laughs> when people say I love you, it's like I'm sorry. I mean, it always means something other than what it is intended to mean. I love you. I mean, you got people in relationships where they're being verbally abused or physically abused, but, but he loves you. He loves you. You got people in relationships where somebody is cheating on the other person, but they love you. People throw that around so loosely. So I have been hurt in my life. I was in a bad relationship. I heard that I love you a million times, but it never had any weight to it. And so what happened to me was I got into a position where I didn't use the words. You know, growing up in my household, we didn't throw those words around freely. We didn't tell each other verbally that we love each other, but we knew we loved each other. You know, it was evident that the love was there, but we never really spoke it. And then when I got into this dating relationship, I started to speak it, and then I got hurt. So then I thought, you know what, I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to keep that to myself. So when I met Micah, he used to tell me early on in our dating time that he loved me, and I could not say it back, and I would not say it back. I would say, I care about you a lot. Well, I really like you. And it was very awkward for both of us. Because usually when you tell somebody you love them, you want to hear it back. And I told him one day, I said, you know what, Mike? If ever I say I love you to you, you will know that it is genuine and it is sincere. Because I don't believe in saying it unless it's real. I don't rubber stamp stuff. I don't put it out there just to make you feel better because you said you love me. If I ever tell you, then you know I love you. So for months, Micah would say, I love you, and I would say, I like you a lot. You're great, you know? I care about you deeply. I, anything but that. So one day we were up on Mount Washington, and I stood in front of him, and I held his hands, and I looked into his eyes, and I told him, I love you. Now, I did not get the desired response at that time. He was kind of, a, had this dumbfounded look on his face. He didn't say a word. It was an awkward moment. But it was real, and it was sincere, and it was genuine. And I came to realize that I actually did love him before I ever told him. But, like, I needed to be certain that this was love, what I was feeling, not infatuation, not anything else. And so eventually it sunk in, I guess, because it was like, wow, you really love me? You know, it's like, yes, you know. And so I think a lot of times this happens in the church, too. I think that we throw words around so loosely and we forget what they really mean and they lose their power. And one of those words is hallelujah. Hallelujah meaning praise ye Yahweh. I hear people throw that praise y'all on everything. No matter what you're talking about, praise y'all. You know, praise y'all, praise y'all, praise y'all. But I don't think that people really know exactly what it means to praise Yahweh. Like if we went around a room and asked for definition of the word praise Yahweh, we would hear some different things. And I really want to minister to the youth today because I think that they don't understand really what praising Yahweh is all about. I think they have the impression that it's singing and clapping and dancing and shouting. And I'll say to you that those things can be manifested outwardly but praise comes from within. Singing alone isn't praising Yahweh. You can sing all kinds of worldly songs. There's no praise to Yahweh going up in that. You clapping is a way to praise, but that's not necessarily praising Yahweh. 
You can be clapping for the Steelers. There's no praise in Yahweh in that. You can be shouting for the Steelers. You know, you could be shouting at your kids because they're getting on your nerves. That is not praise to Yahweh. Dancing. Now, we've seen some of the dances. There is no glory to Yahweh in that. You know, some of these dances these kids are doing, they just might as well get a room, you know? And so singing, clapping, dancing, shouting, all of these things can be manifested outwardly in our praise to Yahweh, but those things in and of themselves is not praise. So what I want to talk about today is what is praise? The definition of praise is to commend the worth of, express approval or admiration for, to laud, which means to give great or extravagant praise to the glory of Yahweh, to glorify him, to extol him. Didn't say singing, clapping, dancing, shouting. Didn't say any of those things. We praise Yahweh for all the things that he's done for us. That would be thanksgiving. We praise Yahweh for who he is. That would be adoration. So in our thanksgiving and our adoration, we are praising Almighty Yahweh. Now, we've all sang the song, when I think of the goodness of Yahweh and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank you for saving me. When we sing that song, I can't contain myself. My soul is crying out, Yahweh, creator of heaven and earth, almighty, sovereign El, who's mindful of me, little old Denise. My king, he wants to fellowship and commune with me. It's in there and a joy, it just bubbles over and you can't contain it. I can't help but praise Yahweh. I can't help but praise him because it just comes out. I couldn't contain it if I wanted to. My soul cries out to him. He is the self-existent one. He doesn't need anything from me, but he wants to fellowship with me, Denise. I'm one in a billion, one in billions, and he knows who I am. He knows what I'm about. He has a purpose for my life. He has a calling on me, the self-existent one, almighty Yahweh. I can't help but praise him. I don't know about you, but I can't sit on that. Last week, we listened to Best Message, talking about how Yahweh is sovereign. Everything belongs to him, even your very breath. Everything. And Yahweh is so kind and gracious and generous to allow us to partake of his goodness. I have to praise him. Scripture says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. So you think about all the good things in your life. They all come from Yahweh. Why wouldn't you praise him? Now, if that doesn't make you want to shout, I think there's something seriously lacking. And that would be relationship. See, there's a difference between religion and relationship. And what I hope to attain today is to bring the youth into relationship with Father Yahweh, to get you to understand exactly where it is you are so you will figure out a way to get where you need to be. Because religion is coming to church. Religion is singing the songs every word but not feeling what you're saying. You know, religion is rules and regulations, and relationship's totally different. I don't praise them because I have to. I praise them because I want to. I don't praise him because y'all say so. I praise him because I can't contain it. It's going to come out. It's going to overflow. I praise him because he cares about me. I praise him because he has delivered me from countless things. He has delivered me out of all kinds of sinful behavior. He has delivered me out of my fears, delivered me out of harm's way. He is a deliverer. How many of you know that Yahweh's a deliverer? Hallelujah. And if he delivered you out of something, why shouldn't you shout? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh the most high. He's a deliverer. I praise him because he has forgiven me. Forgiven me of all of my iniquity. Not some of my sin. All of my sin. And not only did he forgive me. 
but he didn't even make me pay the consequences for the sin. He has delivered me out of the, the what is it? When you, when you sin, you, you die. The law. He delivered me out of the law of sin and die. I don't, I'm, I don't have to die. He's offering me eternal life. You know, when you look at our legal system, people get forgiveness, but there's still consequences. I forgive you, but you still have to go to jail, or you still have to pay penance, you still have to do something. But not with Yahweh. Yahweh forgives me and restores me. I don't have to pay the consequences, none of them. Hallelujah, that makes me want to shout. How can I not praise Yahweh? He's offering me eternal life. He has justified me and redeemed me, saved me and sanctified me. He has kept me. He has healed me. Hallelujah. I got to jump today. Yahweh is awesome. Yahweh is mighty. How can you not praise him? I could go on and on and on about the things that Yahweh has done for me all day. And guess what? So can you. So can you. The list of things that he has done for us is never ending. Like Beth said, everything is his. Everything you got, everything you enjoy, everything you ever want to have is his. Praise him. He's worthy, hallelujah. We are created to praise him. And he wants our praise. Now, some people try to flatter Yahweh. But I want you to know that flattery and praise is not the same thing. See, usually with flattery, you're looking for something in return. You know, maybe you say, you look nice today, because you want them to notice what you got on. <laughs> you look nice today. And they say, so do you. Oh, thank you. You know? Or maybe it's your boss at work. You tell him everything he wants to. You laugh at his stupid jokes. You compliment him, because you want to find favor for your reviews. There's something in it for you. You want to be on their good side, because they're in control of your raises and your job security and all those other things. Flattery. Yahweh doesn't want our flattery. He is the self-existent one. He doesn't need anything from us. He doesn't need for us to tell him he looks nice today. He doesn't need us to butter him up. You know, his blessings abound. And the beautiful thing is we don't have to do anything to, to earn them. You know, the scripture says he shines on the just and the unjust. You know, people are blessed even who aren't serving him. He doesn't want our flattery. He wants us to praise him. Praise is an expression of appreciation. To express approval of or admiration for. To extol, to magnify, to glorify. He wants us to keep him in his right place. He's not your boy. He is almighty Yahweh. To be reverenced. You know what I mean? To be always lifted up. The praise is his. He's the only one worthy. Now, after hearing the definition of praise, how many of you came today to praise Yahweh? How many's whole purpose for being here today is simply to praise Yahweh? Hallelujah. Turn with me to Psalms 150. Psalms 150. I would like everyone who has a King James Version to read out loud with me. Because I think when you read it for yourself, it has more of an impression on you. And I don't want to lose y'all. So anybody with a King James, we're going to read this together out loud. You ready, little time? All right, let's roll. Psalms 150. Praise ye Yahweh. Praise Elohim in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise Yahweh. Praise ye Yahweh. Hallelujah. 
Let everything that has breath praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. All of you got breath today, right? So we're going to praise Yahweh today. Hallelujah. In verse 1, he says, praise Yahweh in his sanctuary. How many of you know that the sanctuary of Yahweh is dwelling inside of you? If you are Holy Spirit filled, the, you, the spirit of Yahweh is living and dwelling inside of you. So where are we going to praise him at? Everywhere we go, hallelujah. Everywhere we go. It's not the building, right? The praise of Yahweh is, should be with us always. You know, the scripture talks about how the earth is his footstool. And we are to worship him at the feet, at his footstool. So if the whole earth is Yahweh's footstool, where in this world can we be that we should not be in worship to Almighty Yahweh? Nowhere. Praise him in the shower. Praise him on the job. Praise him wherever you're at. Whatever you're doing, you praise Yahweh. Praise him everywhere. It says, praise him for his mighty acts. And he has done many, hallelujah. He has done many. We all got a personal testimony in here, hallelujah, for the things that Yahweh has done in our lives. I don't even have to look around and say what he did for you and you and you and you because he's done so much for me, hallelujah. He's done so much in my life. He has kept me. He has healed me. He has blessed me, hallelujah. I can't help but praise him. I will praise him all the days of my life. Because I can't help it. I can't do anything else. We got to praise Yahweh because he's worthy. Hallelujah. It says praise him for his great excellence, his excellent greatness. I mean, do y'all recognize who we're talking about here? You know, we get excited about people in this world. We get a chance to meet somebody famous or rub elbows with the wealthier. You got people. It don't get no greater than Yahweh. You know the creator of heaven and earth, the supreme almighty, hallelujah, and he knows you by name. We got people. We are to praise him for who he is, and he is everything. Now, I want to talk about the instruments. The rest of the chapter talks about how the instruments praise Yahweh. And I was thinking about our music ministry here at the congregation of Yeshua. And we are blessed to have an anointed music ministry. Would you agree? When our musicians play, the anointing flows through the sanctuary. They are truly in tune with the spirit of Yahweh. But what I want you to know is that as good as they are, they cannot be your praise and worship. They may lead the service. They may aid you in your praise. They may help you to get your focus where it needs to be. They may help break down some strongholds, but they cannot generate your worship. True praise only comes from within. Your worship stems from what you're feeling in your heart and in your spirit. In other words, the music ministry can stir up what's already in there. But they can't create what's in there. Now, in light of that, I believe that some of you are in praise service, but you are not praising. Singing all the words to the songs, yes, but filling it within what you're saying, no. I call that going through the motions. Now, we've already established that praise is not singing and clapping and dancing, although it may be manifested by those actions. Praise is something that comes from within. Just doing the outward motions with no adoration, no thanksgiving, is just that, going through the motions. That is not praise to Almighty Yahweh. And I think that this happens to all of us at some point in time or another. I don't want the youth to think this is solely for you because this happens to me sometimes. Sometimes I might be distracted with my own personal problems and issues, thinking about other things. Worship's going on, and I can't enter in because I'm worrying about something out there. 
This happens to me sometimes. Maybe I stay up real late the night before church. So when I get here, I'm fighting my sleep. I'm trying to pay attention, but I'm tired. Maybe I'm concerned about what the rest of you might think about me if I just spontaneously jump up and start shouting hallelujah. Maybe I'm mad at the worship leader, and I don't want to enter into praise with him. It could be any number of things going on, but whatever the reason, I'm hindered. Hindered unable to do what I came here to do. But then there's been other times when I was in the service and a certain song is sung and tears begin to roll down my face. Sometimes it's tears of shame and repentance. Sometimes it's tears of joy and just a gratefulness. And I become totally oblivious to what's going on around me because it's just me and my God, hallelujah, my focus is solely on him. I don't care what the kids are doing. I don't care what's happening around me, behind me, in front of me. I don't care what y'all are doing. It's just me and my God, hallelujah. Yahweh Almighty, the one who sits high and knows me by name, counted every hair on my head, gave me this breath. You know, he knows me. I'm thinking about his sovereignty, his awesomeness, his excellence. He just is. I'm in my own world. I kid you not. It's the greatest feeling I've ever had in my life. There's nothing greater. Nothing greater. You never have joy like that until you are in communion with Almighty Yahweh. And you want to know why? Because we were made to worship him. We were made to praise him. And when we do those things, we're where we're supposed to be. And the satisfaction in that is no greater. There's nothing greater. That's the most awesome place to be is in communion with Father Yahweh. Just me and him. The room is full of people, but it's just me and him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yahweh has given us everything. He has given you food, clothing, shelter. He has given you your very breath. He's given you health. He's given you wealth. He's put loved ones in your life. Hallelujah. He's given you a church family to encourage you and support you and grow you in his word. He has given you everything. He's given you his joy. He's given you his peace. He's given you his forgiveness. Hallelujah. He's given us so many provisions that I can't even begin to count them. Yahweh has given us everything. Praise is what we give him. Praise is what we give to him. Our praise is not for people. Our praise is for him, hallelujah. When I raise my hands in service and I have tears rolling down my face, it's not about what y'all think. I ain't trying to look holy for y'all. Oh, Denise is so holy. I don't care what y'all think. I am given adoration and thanksgiving to my Savior, hallelujah. I don't care how it looks to y'all because it's not for y'all. It's for almighty Yahweh. And that's how Yeshua wants our affections for him to be, open and unashamed. There's no other way to do it, open and unashamed. When I tell Micah I love him, I don't care who hears me. I'm not afraid to hold his hands out in the public. Open and unashamed affection. And my love for Yeshua is no different. As a matter of fact, it's greater. Even more so, I should tell people if they don't want to hear. I love Yeshua. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. I do. You know, we got to praise him. He's my all in all. I love him. And amazingly, he loves me. He loves me. Hallelujah. And I will praise him all the days of my life. We are to praise Yahweh every single day of our life. Now, on the Sabbath, we come together so that we can praise him collectively, so that we can extol him and magnify him and glorify him and give him his worship. That's why we come together. And it amazes me how people can come to church week after week and leave the same way they came, unchanged. 
still worrying about stuff, still mad at somebody, still sinning. Some people treat church like their job. They just show up and put their time in and they leave unchanged. Church should never be like that, hallelujah. Every time you come in here, strongholds should be broken. Growth should be happening. Every time you come in here, something should happen. And that's because there is power in praise. Hallelujah. If you're praising Yahweh the way you ought to be, strongholds will be broken. Your deliverance is in your praise. Your salvation is in your praise. Your peace, your joy, all those things is in your praise. The scripture says Yahweh inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. It's all in the praise. Praise can cause walls to fall. Ask Joshua. Praise can keep you in the fire. Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Praise can loose the chains of bondage. Ask Paul and Silas. There's nothing that praise can't tear down. That is our weapon, hallelujah. I want to praise Yahweh not just because he's done so much for me and not even because he's worthy. I want to praise him because I love him so much and that joy just cannot be contained in this little vessel. I can't help but to praise him. Now, I know it's not always easy for us to enter into the praise and worship mode. A lot of times we got to fight through some stuff to get in that position. Because the devil don't want to see you render Yahweh his praise. He doesn't want to see Yahweh glorified or magnified or extolled. So he's going to bring things into your path to hinder you, to bind you up so you can't praise Yahweh. We got to learn how to fight through. Fight through. We got to fight through our pride. We can't let the devil keep us in our seat. When we stand up and praise him, we can stomp on the devil's head. We got to learn how to praise him. Fight through. Quit worrying about other people looking at you. Because guess what? These other people in here, they ain't your audience. Yahweh is an audience of one, hallelujah. We don't come up in here to be entertained. We come up in here to worship almighty Yahweh. And he is the audience, him and him alone. It don't matter what you think. If you were worshiping Yahweh like you should be, you wouldn't know what Denise is doing. If you got time to recognize what I'm doing, you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing because you too should be focusing on Yahweh. That is why we're here, saints. We're here to praise him. Don't worry if you're not gifted in voice. Scripture says, make a joyful noise unto Yahweh. I make my joyful noise every week. I ain't no singer, but I don't know it because Yahweh is receiving my praise. Make a joyful noise. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Be more concerned about what Yahweh thinks. We got to fight through our desire to stay up late the night before church. We should be well rested so we don't have to fight sleep during the service. Because praise and worship doesn't start at 1 o'clock when you get here. It's the Sabbath. We should be praising Yahweh from the time we open our eyes. We should be in prayer asking Yahweh to bless the service, asking him to make his presence known, to move in the gifts. If there's someone in the assembly that's not saved, praying that today is the day. We should wake up focused on Yahweh, preparing our hearts and our minds for worship. The musicians always pray before they start. And they're asking Yahweh to use them to minister to us, to bless us. Are we blessed, saints? We're blessed because Yahweh's faithful, hallelujah, because they take that time out to get their focus, to get in tune with Father Yahweh, and then he works through them to minister to us and to bless us because he's faithful. He would do no different for you. If you got into prayer before you came in here, you too would be blessed because Yahweh is faithful. We got to learn how to fight through all the strongholds that the enemy has for us. All of our daily struggles, we got to leave them at the door. 
Shake the devil off. Don't bring him up in here with you. Whatever bills you got to worry about and jobs and health and all, they'll still be there when you get done. Leave them out there. Come in here for no other purpose but to praise and lift up the Most High. All that stuff will be there when church is over. Don't bring that baggage into here. We have to learn, saints, to praise Yahweh with our whole heart, whole mind, body, and soul, with every fiber of our being, everything. Let everything that has breath praise Yahweh. Yeshua told the Pharisees that if the people didn't shout, the rocks would cry out for them. Are the rocks crying out for you? Is there a rock with your name on it? See, the only rock in my life is Yeshua and him crucified. That's it. That's the only rock in my life. I don't want no rocks crying out for me. I'm going to cry out for myself. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh, the most high God. Because he's worthy of my praise. The rocks won't cry out for me. And you shouldn't want them to cry out for you either. Now, many times I've heard Micah say, let's offer up a praise clap for Father Yahweh. Today, we're going to give Yahweh a standing ovation. I want everybody on their feet. I want you to praise Yahweh. I want you to thank him for all the things he's done for you this day, all the things he's done in your life. I want you to thank him just for being who he is because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah.